this is a moment, as is this, and so on, and so forth. Moments can be divided into three parts, a beginning, middle, and end, or for the purposes of this study, cause and effect. Three specific entities interacting with each other, cause being the first, and effect being the third. What I am concerned with for the time being is what lies between. For now, we will call that number two. Cause creates effect, potential creates kinetic, question creates answer. The commonality of the three is the word creates. It is that moment which I am curious about, the moment which deals with expectations we hold prior to the effect of any given cause. Take, for instance, something as simple as walking. Every day we walk to get from here to there. We do this, we walk, only due to the preconceived notion that each and every time we lift up our foot, there will be something underneath it to step down on. With each and every step we take, we unknowingly risk the chance that the ground just might not be there when our foot comes down. And this momentary gamble happens so often, and so quickly, that we forget to worry about the risks involved. If we were to slow down this process, which occurs after the cause and before effect, we could more easily observe this crucial moment. Let's, for instance, take a blackboard and a set of fingernails. Separately, both have no potential value, but together, Note, if you will, the pause. You may have felt the effect before the nails actually touched the blackboard. This is the moment defined once again as the number two. The cause was the placement of the blackboard and the fingernails, and the effect was the sound due to the scratching of the board. In between was the neurological state conjured by preempting a physical feeling. This occurred primarily due to our own perception of what happens when a blackboard is scratched. We knowingly anticipated our future before it happened. Now in the case of walking, the future as we know it is quite clear. The ground will be there when our foot comes down. But what if we didn't know this for sure? Would we walk slower and more cautiously? And more importantly, what if the ground wasn't there? This is Jen, age 13, my first girlfriend. There's so much to tell, so where do I begin? I met her that year in seventh grade. We went out for a couple of months. She had so many problems though. She was a liar, she was confused. She was obsessed for attention. The story. She once told me she was raped. She never was. She just told me that to get sympathy for me. Ow! Mom, he hit me! You're such a liar. I didn't touch you. Yes, you did! You kids don't stop fighting. I am turning this car around and we are going home.
There was this one big fight, though, and that was what changed everything. We became really close friends after we broke up. She ended up leaving my high school to go to another because she was hated by virtually everyone. You remember the girl back in high school that everyone used to refer to as a slut or a bitch or a whore? Well, that about covers her reputation. I never understood why she would act the way she did, but everyone hated her for it. So she left. There were even times where I'd be embarrassed to say that I was still friends with her. After the big fight, though, I wasn't embarrassed anymore. Even after she apologized. I didn't care. It was too late. She got worse, too. She left her second school for some hospital for depressed teens. She used to call me from there and ask me to visit. I never would. Eventually, I stopped returning her calls, and she stopped calling. When you stop caring about someone, it's easy to forget about them. I didn't see Jen again until that summer. I was working and she walked in. I ran into the back and hid so she wouldn't see me. I watched her. It must have been about six months since I last saw her, but she looked different, older. Her hair was shorter. Her face had changed. As she walked out with her mother, I followed behind to get another glimpse of this stranger. They got in the car and left. That was the last time I ever saw her. I wonder sometimes what it was like, what went through her head when she took that last step of life. Maybe even for just a split second. She didn't want to go, but it would have been too late. After that first step, it was too late for her to step back. Maybe she even tried. Hello? Hey. What's going on? Did you hear about Jen? Stop breathing. Take me back. Please, take me back. We can't go back now. But I'm scared. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. No, I won't. Take me on. I'm going to get off. Here we go.